so Chris Peg Peg writes in and she um, I'm going to summarize the question here. Basically, she has two different types of conversions going on. She has what we call harder conversions or kind of real conversions like lead forms being submitted, uh, calls from ads, calls from website, the actual leads. And then she has what I call softer conversions, time on site, pages per uh, visit, um, and those kind of conversions, maybe a newsletter sign up. And she's trying out different different uh, bidding strategy. So she's doing, um, she's tried everything from enhanced CPC, manual bidding with enhanced CPC turned on to target CPA. She says target CPA has been working. The reason target CPA is working is because she feeds the machine a lot of conversions. And some of those conversions are the high value ones, um, the leads, some are the softer ones, the newsletter signups, the time on site, the pages per visit. So what she's wanting to do is not rely so heavily on the softer conversion. She wants to only optimize based on the actual leads because that's what the goal of the campaign is primarily. But she's nervous that if she she stops counting some of these convert the softer conversions as conversions, uh, then is it is she going to have enough data to kind of feed the machine um, with target CPA? Should she try different strategies? So Chris, the question is. You want to do automated bidding. You want to do it on based on some kind of conversions. You have two sets of conversions, really, really in-depth, or the hard conversions, the lead forms, the calls, and then you have the softer conversions. And right now, all of them are feeding the machine in terms of target CPA. What would you recommend Peg do? I, yeah, this is it's a great question because uh, Peg's focused on – you know, making the best decision and not uh, padding her report with, uh, you know, false information. So, you know, some of you may, out there may be wondering, like, why? I mean, just, just what I do is I set up conversions based on anything that's a value. And, you know, if they go to the store page, then I have that as a conversion. If they said, add something to the cart, that's a conversion. If they purchase, that's a conversion. And I optimize so that it'll encourage people to make those decisions. The fact is, the reason Peg asked this question is because the percentage of people that go to the store page, the percentage of people that view the checkout page will be significantly higher if you compare it to the completion of a purchase. Um, so if someone completes a purchase you know, at a 1% rate, the viewed checkout page and the viewed, uh, you know, added to cart might be 10, 15, 20%. Um, because people may just want to check out how much the shipping is or, you know, uh, additional fees, things like that. So this is really important because um, the system, if you use automated bidding, uh, like maximize conversions um, uh, and uh, CPA, max, uh, you know, best target CPAs CPA, yeah. Uh, bidding, yeah, target CPA, then the system, at no fault of its own, just the way that it's designed, will push for the most conversions. And what you might find is you're essentially just pushing for viewed store page or the smart bounce rate uh, conversion, which means you know, if anybody stays on the page more than 30 seconds, that tracks as a conversion. So now you have a report with hundreds of conversions, and the person you know, that you're working for says, I know, I know you said we had 250 conversions, but listen, I only sold two widgets last month. You know, I don't see why I'm spending $3,000. I only spent, you know, only sold this much. So it's, it's really critical. And so for Peg, I would say in your, in your question, I think the best answer is what you described. What I would recommend is setting up to maximize the conversions based on conversion value. Um, that's what I think is going to be the best thing. Um, and this is relatively new when you can maximize conversions and choose instead of uh, just number of conversions, you can, there's a little radio button underneath it that says maximize based on value. And you can set those values at the conversion level. So um, that's what I would recommend. And, and for those of you listening that don't know what I'm talking about, you can actually go in and manually set a um, uh, view of checkout page to be a dollar 
you know, um, uh, someone who added something to cart could be 25 cents, um, you know, and then when they make a transaction, when they purchase, it literally shows the value of that transaction. That might be 150, 200, whatever their actual purchase is. So that helps equate and put things into scale. So when adding something to cart is a very small value, but a purchase would be equal to what the actual value is to the company. So that's what I would recommend. Um, great question. Jason, what do you think? Well, the, you can also do it with, with a lead generation campaign. So if you have a, if you have a lead or a call lead form or a call and say it takes five calls to get an actual signed up customer or five lead forms to get a signed up customer and say the value of one customer is $500 takes five to get $500. You can call each lead a value of 100. So then a lead form completion or a call, you can put in a value of 100. And then you can do what you're saying, this target return on ad spend automated bidding, where you tell it what return you want to get on your ad spend, like 500% or whatever percentage you want to use. Um, I think that's probably the best way to do it in Peg's situation, where she has some conversions that are going to be worth a lot, some conversions that are not worth a lot. Um, I think the, the very difficult thing is finding out what are those conversions worth and not fooling yourself because you're going to be putting data into the machine with this target return on ad spend based on the value of your different conversions and the machine's going to do what the machine does but if you don't put in the right inputs to it things could go wrong so to me figuring out what a lead form what a website call or call from ad is worth um I think that's pretty easy because you can just look at how many leads, how many conversions on average does it take me to sign up a new customer. I think the more difficult part is putting a value on newsletter signups, putting a value on viewed the contact page. So I don't know, Chris, I think for me, obviously the more conversion data you have, the better I'd be very inclined to, if I'm doing automated bidding to try to do it just off of hard conversions, I think, um, even if you do, but if you can, if you're confident in the values you can put on those softer conversions, then of course, the more data, the better. And I think it's worth trying out a return on target ad spend, um, automated bidding, if that's your goal. Um, by the way, uh, we're going to use these Q and A's to really, really uh, improve people's Google ads games, Chris. So when we reference different topics like this, they're going to be in the show description links to uh, articles about it. So I'll have a link to wow. return on uh, target ad spend. And then also, Chris, I was coming across this this week, and then we'll move to the next question. All conversions column. Have you ever seen that all conversions? Um, mm -hmm. It's a pretty cool column, and we'll have a link to the um, article about it. But what you can do is you can create conversions. Some of the conversions you can say when you create them don't include in quote unquote conversions. And what you're telling the system is, Hey, this is only newsletter signups. It's only time on site. I am doing lead form tracking website call tracking. I don't really want to put these as inputs in the conversion column, but I still want to know how much they're happening. And so then you can say, don't include in conversions. But then the question is, well, well then where do I see those conversions show up that I'm not quote unquote, including in conversions, the softer conversions. And you can add the all conversions column and then segment out by conversion action. And that's where you can see, see what's going on there. Yeah. So Chris, the more the smart bidding comes into play, the more the automate comes into play, there's going to be a lot of options with conversion tracking and especially that's, return yeah. on target ad spend. I think we need to talk about that a lot more because if you get those numbers, right, the inputs, right, the outputs can be real impressive. That's, that's, yeah, that's in, very true. I think that's an excellent point to bring up the all conversions tab because um, not all conversion. Well, this is, I, Side note here, can we, can we just change all conversions? Can we call it conversions or like some other word? Con, 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 all have, conversions, even the ones you said don't include in conversions. Yeah. Let's like, get the acronym so, for that. <laughs> like so confusing to say conversions are conversions, all conversions are not conversions. Uh, that, that okay, go, again, no we talked about it on Monday. I'm not asking for 1% of alphabet and shares delivered right. to my mailbox Just, and I become a billionaire. I'm not asking for that. If you want to do that. And I think I'm owed that, honestly, um, we can, we can work something out. 
but I am giving away tons of great advice to them for free. Call it reported conversions that are actually the ones oh. that are reported and then call it all conversions like they do now, the ones not, that you're not reporting. Well, let's, for, for the purpose of this podcast, let's call conversions conversions and let's call all conversions non-reported conversions. No, because all conversions includes both reported and non-converted. Not reported. Know, but for the purpose. Uh, uh, I love that we're such, arguing such, about something we can't control. We have no control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but you're, uh, Chris, I agree with your general point. Like it is confusing how you it, tell it. Cause I, am, I, I questioned myself when I was making notes for the show. I was like, is it really called do not include in conversions? And then yeah. the column is called and all conversions. Called, but yeah, it is. It's right? all conversions. Yeah. yeah. So, so, okay. So, skipping all of that i mean the, the the important part here is that you can measure something that is not a monetary value but is still a measure a measurement of success uh so getting a phone call getting a lead is definitely a monetary value because you can track because you get 10 of those calls of those. you're going to get business right. basically yeah you know you're going to get business within a certain percentage you know if you look at your history so you, you can assign a monetary value but you can't assign a monetary value to someone just looking at the free quote page because that's no. i mean that's ridiculous you get like 0.02 percent conversion rate you know you're not going to rely on on that kind of measurement it can go up and down it's not reliable yeah. So the all conversions is great. I think that's a really good point because uh, possibly, you know, I'd change my answer. I don't know if I'm allowed to change my answer, but maybe Go that's ahead. a better answer for her. Like just use it as an all conversion and, and continue what you're doing, but just measure that all conversion, non-reporting conversion um, column as a measurement of success rather than uh, using the automated system. I don't know. Maybe she really wants to use the automated system. And that's what she's going for. How can she use it more effectively? But, uh, but Chris, the way, thing about Google ads knowledge is like knowing all of these options, whatever Peg wants to use, whatever her goals are with her bidding, like that's her individual campaign, but that's her individual goal with her bidding. But just the fact that Peg and everyone listening has all these options to know about, yeah. it allows yeah. you to have different, different more flexibility in the Google ads campaign. When a client asks for something, when you're trying to figure out something as the advertiser, the more you know about the platform and Chris, I'm going to, I'm going to just butter you up and rub you down right now. Nobody okay. knows more about the platform than my friend, Chris Schaefer. Like he tells me about <laughs> nooks and crannies of this thing that I've never even heard of. And uh, it's great. <laughs> great. When he comes out with uh, some hidden gems like that. Can I say that, Chris? Yeah. Can I say that? I, I mean, don't you know a lot about because... the platform? It's not because of genius or smartness. It's literally about hours. Definitely um, not about smartness. Hours put that. into it. No, uh, I don't no, know if that's I, a word. I, I said, I said, uh, what was it? Louisville, you know, and I still, I still regret that. Uh, and I love that day, you still, so. part of you still questions the world that it's actually called Louisville. And you're like, yeah, it I think it is Louisville. It, it says Louis right there. Like if someone oh. says, hi, my name is. Hey, Chris, can Lewis, I do a little I, radio? Speaking of Lewis, we're going to take a question now from Tom from the St. Louis Cardinals. 